Good evening. Good evening, everyone who has joined us on Facebook and YouTube today. Welcome to uh, Ministries of Hope Christian Church. Um, Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday night Bible study. Sorry if you hear that. That's our children's school thing going off. But welcome, welcome. Um, uh, we have today um, Brother Thompson, uh, Reverend Thompson, myself, Reverend Hutchins, and um, Brother Hutchings. Uh, let us keep our, our senior pastor in the priors. Um, we are located at 385 Garrisonville Road, right here in Stafford, Virginia. Come on down and worship with us when our sanctuary is open after this COVID. Um, let us pray, go to God in prayer, so we'll ask his word, his blessings on his study tonight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for your strength. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning and having us here, dear Father God, so that we can worship you, praise you one more time. Thank you for everything that you are about to do, that you're about to impart in us. Thank you for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you're giving us. And help us, Lord God, to give it as we get it, dear Father God. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. 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 Over to you, Reverend Thompson. Thank you, Reverend Hutchings. Amen. As Reverend Hutchings said, welcome this Wednesday evening as we continue diving into the word of God in the book of 1 Samuel. Amen. Um, last time we were before you, we recapped Ruth and um, went over some important things that stuck out and we got into the first chapter of 1 Samuel and we were introduced to Penina and um, Hannah. And Penina uh, was, they were both two wives of, <clears throat> um, of a king. And he basically, Hannah um, wanted a child. Her womb was shut up and Penina made fun of her, tormented her. Penina had children, you know, but she wasn't the loved wife. Um, Hannah was, and we saw where Hannah took it to God in prayer. She went um, and took it, laid it at God's feet, and we're getting ready to see where she had, she had already made a commitment to God that if you know you remember me and bless me with this child, um, I will dedicate the, that child back to you. And so she's made that promise to God, and so now we're getting into the birth of the child that God is blessing her with. And we're going to see whether she keeps that word or not. Amen. So we're going to continue on with Samuel's birth. And if you're just joining us again, that's first champ Samuel, the book of first Samuel picking up at verse 19. And as always, we're reading out the King James version, unless we otherwise state and um, brother Thompson, you want to start off 19 through 23. Amen. Ch um, verse 19, chapter one. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore, it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah and then had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee God, with thee good. Tarry unto thou have winged him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. Amen. 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 And um I correct myself, Elkanah was not a king. So Elkanah was not a king. Um here we go. So we we'll start off there. Um if you want to read those commentaries before we get started. Amen. Commentary starting at for 19 says, Rama lay along the major north south highway five miles north of Jerusalem in the territory of Benjamin. The tender words the Lord remembered her remind the reader that ultimately, ultimately 
It is God who brings new life within the womb. In the Old Testament, the remember means not simply to think about someone, but to act on their behalf. In the States, the name Samuel may be a wordplay meaning requested from God. A second possibility is the meaning heard by God. Mm -hmm. It also states the expression yearly sacrifice literally means sacrifice of the days and probably designates one of the three required festivals, Passover, the Feast of Weeks, or the Feast of Tabernacles. The word vow may denote a separate vow that Elkanah had made, or perhaps it designates Hannah's vow that Elkanah affirmed and adopted when he heard of it. Amen. And for 23 states, an apocryphal book of two Maccabees suggests Israelite children were weaned at a ramp at around age three, a custom not unusual in societies where homes lacked running water and where the purity of drinking water was difficult to, to maintain. Mm -hmm. The last for 23 it states the Hebrew verb um, translated established literally means cause to stand. Elkanah wanted God's blessing to remain on the young boy Samuel. Amen. 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 So we see where she said she wanted to go ahead and wean him first um, and then give him, dedicate him back over to God. So she had every intention of keeping the vow that she made to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Brother Hutchings, you got something in that commentary before we get started commenting? No. Okay. Amen. Um, it, it, what stood out to me is that God didn't wait. After um, Hannah went and made her vow to the Lord, um, it's it's not several months later or anything. It's like as soon as she um, went back to Rama, shortly after she conceived um, due to intercourse. And um, so right there where you see in the King James Version where it says, um, Elka knew Hannah, that means that they had intercourse. So mm -hmm. um, just for, for clarity for for anyone who says, okay, where did, where did she see intercourse in there? But um, that's what it means in biblical term. We, we, we say she knew her, he knew him. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at where God is an on-time God. And it shows that when we we reach out to God, when we cry out to God, and, we, and if we don't take it back up, like you said last night on the, the prior line, and we leave it there so that God can work with it, he is going, you're going to see immediate results. Because you, you don't have it no more. When you pray, you got to let it go. When we say let go and let God, it's easier said than done. But if we truly let go and let God, then we 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 will behold the salvation of the Lord. He will do great and mighty things that we know not of. Amen. Amen. I love um uh, the scripture that it reminds me of is Job chapter um 22. And verse 27 through 20, I got to quote this all the time, but it says, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Amen. So it's like when you when you make a vow and you pay it, you can decree a thing, you know, and the fact that she made that vow and she had every intention of keeping that vow and doing what she promised God she would do. Mm -hmm. um, as Pastor had <clears throat> stated last study, I believe, where she was talking about how it, it took a special woman in order to do that, in order mm -hmm. to come through, because let's put it in today's term. Who's going to give their child to the priest? Who's going to give their child? You know, who's really about mm -hmm. to do that? You know, you'd be like, no, there's pedophiles. We find every excuse. But the fact that she actually followed through on that vow and planned to follow through on that vow just shows the woman of God that she was. And then, as you said, that it quickly got quickly moved on her behalf because she left it there. You know, she didn't pick it back up and put it in his hand. And that's what happens, you know, when we when we actually believe in God and believe 
do just what he said. He's going to do just what he said. He said just the must to see the faith and he can act on that. So that's basically what we're seeing here with her is that she's actually doing. And I love the fact that Elkanah, her husband said, okay, once she said that they didn't get into an argument, you don't see nowhere in here. He just said, okay, only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until he went. He was in total and complete agreement with her. You know, um, I love that right there because um, <clears throat> God says he'll watch over his word to perform it. And then he said, commit your ways to him and he'll establish them. So she committed her way, her son to him, and he's established the fact that she has one, you know? Amen. So that, that, that's um, amazing right there. Any other um, commentary or anything on those before we continue? I, I, I also <clears throat> like the fact that he waited until he was, <clears throat> he wasn't an, uh, uh, not, hel not helpless. He wasn't yeah. totally helpless. He, he wasn't, they didn't have to, to feed him from a bottle or anything like that. He she gave him proper nourishment to the point where he can he is self sustenant. He can eat what we call today table food. You know, yeah. so, so now he can concentrate and learning and growing in God. He 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 weaned her off the milk so he can um grow with God. It's just it reminds me of of Cain and Abel somewhat when um they uh gave god the best the first yeah. and the best of the flock not just anything the best so when when she she put him took him to, at the prime where you know he he weaned her she gave her all the sustenance that he needs so that he's not going to be sickly he's not go he's in the presence of god and even though you know they could um provide for her just like Moses they sent for her his mother to to to, to give him uh, milk so um just just that tidbit right there where mm. she didn't just just throw it up in God's hand throw it right back she made sure it was good enough yeah amen 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 <clears throat> if you're just joining us we're in chapter one uh chapter one of first Samuel Picking up at verse 24 through 28, Brother Hutchings. Amen. And when she had weaned him, she took him <coughs> with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child of Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as thou so liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped, and he worshiped the Lord there. Amen. 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 I love that there because, you know. <clears throat> after God blesses you with something, um, looking at verse 24, and when she had weaned him, she took him up with her and three bullocks and one eaf and a, a flower. She brought praise. You know, she came there with a mission. And the fact that sometimes in our life, you know, when God blesses us with, us with stuff, we forget about it. We forget about them. We automatically assume the fact that we've done it. It was us alone, you know, but I love the fact that she went and praised him, you know, so when God blesses you, you don't forget to thank him, you know, you don't forget to thank him for that blessing that he's giving you. Um, I love it in our commentary here, <coughs> excuse me, where it says um, the Mace Meditor text reads three bullocks here. The reference to a single bull in verse 25 and the testimony of other other early manuscripts suggest it should be a three year old bullock. However, it may be that one bull uh, constituted Elkanah's sacrifice of Thanksgiving for Samuel's birth, while the other two were part of his of his usual sacrifice and hence were not mentioned in verse 25. So it was something that they were doing on a regular, you know, praising God, um, which is a blessing. Anybody else have anything there? Um, my commentary reads, um, 
to do what she promised, Hannah gave up what she wanted most, her son, and presented him to Eli to serve in the house of the Lord. In dedicating her only son to God, Hannah was dedicating her entire life and future to him. Because Samuel's life was from God, Hannah was not really giving him up. Rather, she was returning him to God, who had been the one who gave him to Hannah in the first place. These verses illustrate the kind of gifts we should give to God. Do your gifts cause you little Sunday mornings or a comfortable tithe, or are they gifts of sacrifice? Are you presenting God with tokens, or are you presenting him with your entire life? Amen. 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 My, my, my commentary also pointed out that um, her fulfilling her, her promise to God and giving over the child at the age of three, um, this is when children start talking um, really good at the age of three. So now he's not uh, a burden onto Eli, but he is at the prime age where she, he can suck up all this, the, the, that Eli had to teach him. He is, he is undefiled, yeah. he is unspoiled. And um, so he can learn the rudiments of the tabernacle service without anything um, coming in or anything, um, anything to spoil or, or, or damage his, his way of thinking. Yeah, mm. amen. I also love the fact too that that she went back, you know, as because when she was praying, Eli thought she was drunk at first, yeah, you know, and the fact that she went back and then told him the testimony. You remember I was in here praying. You remember you yeah. thought I was drunk. Well, guess yeah. what? God answered my prayer. He yeah. answered the prayer. He he saw that, you know, and that's that's what God does, you know, to get the glory out of our lives. When he blesses you, it's, it's blessed to be a blessing because now Samuel is coming in to help, you know, and he will be a blessing in that arena for Eli as well. You know, so that's that's interesting there. You were about to say something. Amen. Amen. Well, I like the references did for when um, Hannah was stating in on verse 27 of how she was saying that she, you know, for this child, I pray and the Lord hath given me my petition. So it's, it, reference, it references Matthew 7, 7, just sort of stating, you know, what, what you ask for, you, you know, shall receive. And in that um, Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 7 states, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. And that's, you know, Jesus speaking through in, in those verses. So that's just, you know, referencing and, you know, sort of reiterating what um, Reverend Thompson was saying is that when you go to the Lord, he will answer you. So just like she was saying, you know, my prayers were answered, you know, reiterating to her husband that, you know, go to the God and, you know, send those prayers up. Just like as we state, you know, during the prayer line, you know, send those prayers up and they will be answered. Amen. Amen. And that's why we're so happy when we get on the prayer line or even just period when you hear that God is blessing someone, yeah. you know, um, to hear that. I'm sure Eli was happy, you know, mm -hmm. and because when you're praying and things like that and you pray for people and you, and you come back and you hear that God is actually answered. It's a testimony for everybody because, you know, we're on this battlefield together. You know, it's not no I and team. It's really a together thing. And so it's so happy because you're like, yes, he answered yours. Who's next? You know, it's that yeah. kind of thing. And that um, I love that that um, right there, because that's exactly, you know, you're asking and and God says we're two are in agreement. You know, anything they ask, it'll be done unto them. You know, so Amen. it's a it's a blessing to know. Um that God is still answering prayers as he did then, he still does today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and also, also you see that um, you have two or more that was in agreement. When mm -hmm. she was praying, her and um, Eli was in agreement. And mm -hmm. then now when it's time to give the child back, her and Elkanah is in agreement. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you're in agreement with the word of God, that's a renewing of mind. When your yeah. mind is in agreement with, with what God says or what God demands from you so that he is, it's like, like Pastor said, yes, where two or three are gathered. 
their God will be, and you and he you he'll do great and mighty things. So when you pray, it that's why it's also good sometimes to to pray um, collectively, so that you know you can move twice the mountain you could have moved when you you Amen. were alone. Amen. 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 And keep on going there. Uh, Hannah's prayer in Psalm. So now we've seen her do that, and now we're going to see her praising God, uh, verse 1 through 11. Brother Thompson, you may get stopped. Amen. First Samuel <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejo rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in, in the Lord. My mouth is mm -hmm. enlarged over my enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our, our God. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowels of the, of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. That they were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is wax feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive, he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich, he bringeth low and lifteth up. In verse 8, he raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lift up lifteth up the beggar from the dunk hill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pil pil um, pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. Verse 10, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And last verse, verse 11. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. Amen. 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 She is praising the Lord. <clears throat> my my Amen. commentary says for um, 2 and verse 1, it says, Anna, with clear reference to her rival Penina, spoke of her joy in the Lord, who had helped her with achieve, help her achieve satisfaction at last. Horns used by animals for defense and attack symbolizes strength. Thus, Hannah spoke of her horns in describing the, the strength that had come to her because God had answered her prayer. Mm -hmm. Because you remember she was being tormented and made fun of and everything else. And now you see who gets the last laugh. You know, yeah. I love that because um, she's talking about here. She starts off talking about how she's happy. My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is ex exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I have rejoiced in thy salvation. And we know salvation is just God's deliverance. Yes. You know, so she's like, I laugh at basically I'm laughing at my enemies who tried, thought they had yeah. one up on me. But how do you not know that God has the last mm -hmm. laugh? Because then she drops down. Um, she talks about <clears throat> there is none holy as the Lord. For there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. There's nothing else that's going to sustain you. There's nothing else that you're going to be able to lean on but God. And then we got verse three. I love talk no more so exceedingly proud because she starts to say, and she's like, don't continue bragging. Don't continue speaking, you know, proud words because the Lord God knows everything. Yeah. Except for the Lord God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. So he judges. He's going to judge, you know, he's going to judge. So you got to watch what you say. You got to watch what comes out your mouth. I love it in our commentary because it says arrogancy might come from people who did not realize God's ways are higher than theirs, you know? And we see a lot of that today, arrogancy. We see a lot of 
things going on as far as people believing that they've done something or they're doing things and it's really, it's all God and him. We live, move and have our being, you know, I just thought that was interesting there. And then she talks about the bows of the mighty men are broken and they that stumble are girded with strength, you know, so you may be down one day, God will lift you up the next, oh, yeah. you know, it's a lot here. Um, so I'll let you guys go ahead with the commentary, like the, brother. The commentary for four through five, where it says these reversals are not surprising from God's perspective, where poor become rich and rich become poor. Yeah. The first become last and the last first. Yeah. And those who seek to save their lives lose them while others who willingly lose their lives gain life. References Luke 9, 24 through 25. Life often brings unexpected turnabouts, especially since the Lord can intervene to overrule the expected. Amen. Amen. I, I like that part with the mm. referencing Luke 9, 24 through 25. That's just reiterating that, you know, when you give your life to the Lord, you may lose some things, but you're going to gain a whole bunch. Come know? on. Amen. 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 Oh. Nobody yeah. leave house home for my sake and they don't return a hundredfold, okay? That's right. Like That's you, right. May, you may lose some things, but you gain peace. You may lose some yeah. things, but you're going to gain. <laughs> he said he would oh. make your enemy your footstool. Come on. But when you praise him, when you, when you give it to him, when you leave it there. Yep. And, and mm -hmm. it says, he who was barren has now born seven children, but mm -hmm. he, but she who has had many sons pines away. Yeah. Look mm -hmm. at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll read the commentary here for 10 and 11, where it says the Hebrew word behind adversaries has a legal connotation. No one has a case against the Lord. The mention of God's king and his anointed may anticipate the establishment of the kingship in Israel. Some interpreters have suggested that Hannah spoke pr prophetically of God's everlasting kingdom under the Messiah. In the 11th, the term minister is not used of slaves, and it often um, denotes a higher level of service, including priestly service. Hmm. I just I just think about, you know, you know, you know, these these powerful verses and that, you know, it's, it's stating that it's Hannah's prayer and song. And it's, you know, it just makes you think about, you know, when you hear songs of today and how powerful they, you know, sound and how powerful they can, you know, sort of relate to how good God is. And you just think about, you know, as we say back then, you know, if you hear something like this and just think, you know, how, how, <laughs> I guess, you know, um, prayerful she is and how, um, how how much she believes in God and how just you know the good that you know she sees in the Lord and that she's I guess you know trying to pass it on and you know sing the praises. It just yeah. seems like power just powerful verses. Yeah. She's giving him the credit, you know, she's honoring him. And we miss that sometimes where you know God will do something for us and we're so busy asking for the next thing and we don't stop to say thank you. You know, like she's literally Mm -hmm. praising God. You know, I love that verse eight, you know, where it says he raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dung hill. Mm -hmm. You know, because we know what dung is. It's poop. You know, he lifts them up from that. And then it says to set them among princes and to make them inherit the mm -hmm. throne of glory for mm -hmm. the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon him. Meaning that it's all under his control. You know, exactly. it's all under God's control. He decides yeah. who's going to bless and who's not. Yeah. He decides who's going to be lifted and who isn't. He decides mm -hmm. who's going to live and who's going to die. That's all his will. And it has a purpose, mm -hmm. a perfect purpose, you know? And so it's just, it's amazing. It almost hits on what you were talking about last study, where it's like, you don't have to worry about where you came from. Mm -mm. God is accessible to everyone. You know, where it talks about the poor yeah. from the dust. It don't matter. God will take anybody mm -hmm. and make them somebody, you know? Yeah. So it's, it, it's just amazing. You know, there's no respect of persons in him. And I love that. And the fact that she knows that is like, yes, it's over my enemies. But at the same time, you know, she's talking about the fact that it's God who did it. It's not Amen. me. It's not nothing. I wasn't special. Yeah. God did Amen. it, you know? Amen. 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 There's, there's there's times in our lives when 
we as Christians fail to really stop and give God the praise and the honor he deserves. There's mm -hmm. the, and praise and worship is is a is a powerful thing. It's a mm -hmm. very powerful thing. And there, God has done so much for us, but yet still sometimes we just go on our same day and say, thank you, God. Thank you, mm -hmm. God. I loved it that night when Pastor came on the, the prior line and she was just in that mode of praise and worshiping God. You know, mm -hmm. there's there, God, when you look back over everything that God has done for you over 2021, mm -hmm. It's it's sometimes you probably should just take a day to praise him, to yeah. worship him, to thank him for all he had done for you, because yeah. it, it, he he deserves all that praise. Yes, and more. You know, I just said if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank him enough. You know, That's because right. he's done so so much, and the fact that she recognizes that. That lets you, I mean, it's further showing Hannah's character. It's further showing her character from the point of she laid it all at his feet and not just laid it all at his feet. Then once she had the child, she made sure, as you said, it was acceptable. She weaned him off to make sure that he wasn't needing anything from her physically before she was able to drop him off. Then once she does that, that even showed that she answered her vow. You know, we oh, saw man. somebody else do that as well. Um, when he won the war and had to his daughter, you know, she was the first one to come out. So she had to go and, and be done with the priest. Um, who was that? Was that Jason? Um, and then you turn around and you have her, you show her actually following through on her word, actually acting out her faith. Mm -hmm. And then now the third thing here is she's praising. She's yes. using every single tool in our arsenal as Christians, yes. you know, yes. and that's the beautiful thing is that looking at this is like, you know, she's not a talker. She's a doer, you know, faith Amen. without work dead. And we see her actually walking out her faith. And that's what it is. Some people sometimes think that when you say, you know, you got to have works, you got to go heal the blind, signs following. But these are signs following right here. She prayed for a child and God blessed her. That's a sign following. You know, it's not always laying hands on people. It's not always healing the sick, making the blind see. God bless you with that gift. Thank God for it. You know, we have those who have that. But this right here is her works. Her works is that, is that That's she's right. walking out and believing in yes. God. Yes. You know, yes. just to believe in God, there's mm -hmm. power in that. Yes. You know, just to believe in God. Yes. I just, I love this right here because we saw Deborah sing a song too. You know, we saw them sing songs after God brought them yes. through. Yes. So, and, and the Bible does say, you know, they're happy sing songs, you know, That's so right. she's singing That's her right. song to God and, and praising him. And I'm sure he was well pleased. Yeah. You know, I was just mm -hmm. about to, to mention, um, is it Miriam? When they cross the Red Sea, <laughs> yeah. they, they sing and they praise when God has come Pretty. through for you. Take yeah. a minute to yeah. worship, to sing, worship. praise, yeah. to let God know that you appreciate him. Yeah. 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 It's not like he needs it, but oh, That's Lord, right. he does something That's for right. us. You know, yeah. it keeps us in a humble state. You know, Brother Chris, you got something in your commentary over there? Um, I think y'all kind of hit over it, but it says here, it says, uh, for the verse three, it says, no doubt, as Hannah said these words, she was thinking of Peninnah's arrogance and chiding. Hannah did not have to get even with Peninnah. She knew that God is all knowing and that he would judge all sin and pride. Mm. Hannah wisely left judgment up to God. Resist the temptation to take justice in your own hands. Mm -hmm. God will weigh your deeds as well as the deeds of those who have wronged you. Yes. Mm. That's a good point right there. We we missed that one. Yeah, that's a good point because, you know, we want to, people do us wrong. We want an eye for an eye, tooth for a yes. tooth. We want to quote some scriptures. But God also mm -hmm. says, pray for those, you know, who spitefully use you and abuse you, you know. Mm -hmm. So taking it all to God, period, you know, when you're going through challenges with others and things like that, bring it all to God because he loves yes. you both. Yes. To be honest, mm -hmm. he loves you and he loves your enemy just the same. Mm -hmm. So pray for them, you know, pray for them because that's what you would want somebody to do for you if you were in mm -hmm. here, you yeah. know, 
because it is do as others others of you have them doing to you. And and nine times out of ten, sometimes well, Panana knew what she was doing. I can't say that because I was about to say, you know, sometimes people don't even know they wronged you, and half yeah. the time that's true. But Panana knew what she was doing. Yeah. Panana knew what she was doing. She knew exactly what she was doing. But you see that she didn't get even with her. She took it to God in prayer, and and um, you see where God has blessed her, not with one, but seven. That means complete. You know, that number seven yeah. is completeness, right? Because he rested on that seventh day. So we, he did that thing through and through. So yeah. I just thought mm, that's a blessing because it's it's a, relevant for us today because we go through a lot of challenges, whether it be on work, whether it be around in the neighborhood, whether you be, on, you know, wherever you are, you all you can come up against oppression. Yeah. You can come up against people who don't like you. You can yeah. come up against people or you can be the one who's actually invoking certain feelings. But to lay it at God's feet and leave it there and you can watch that change happen physically yeah. you can watch it happen where sometimes i've seen where people who growing up you know didn't care for um a family member and they will wind up later on be the one blessing the family member you mm -hmm. know you see god turn it in full circle because mm -hmm. a lot of it all that is is satan getting glory in there yeah. you know because he doesn't want you to get along because as we discussed there's power in agreement yeah you know yeah. so anything to tear up that agreement He's on it, you know. So I, that's that's a good point right there. You 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 got to be <laughs> careful. You you really got to be careful when you have, yeah, and how you treat <clears throat> what you have, because the Panina treated what she had as if she gave it to herself, yeah, and as if as if she she didn't need to praise God for it. Yeah. So how are you gonna take what God give you and throw it in somebody else's face? Amen. You know, so when you when you, right there you say be care the the saying that says be careful um um for those that you step on going up because mm -hmm. you, they might be the same one that pass you on on your down mm -hmm. right so it, it's like right there in the scripture it tells you that she who was barren was uh, and and had born seven as you say but she who had seven mm -hmm. pined. So no matter how much yep. you have right now, right? Remember yep. that it don't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. You know, God what bless God bless you with Lord. is not for you to be, be prideful about. It's not for you to flaunt. It's not for you to throw in somebody's face. It's for you to praise God and Amen. to bless Amen. others with it. Amen. Right? Anna praised God. Anna prayed, then she was humble, then she left to that God's feet, and then she fulfilled her promise that she promised God. Some of us, we go to God and we ask for stuff and we promise God stuff. But when we get what, what we ask God for, we forgot what we promised to do. Mm -hmm. So we don't do it. We remember it, just don't do it. Mm -hmm. And then when God take it away, then you're like, I know God never gave me this to take it away. But what did God, what did you do after God gave it to you? Amen. 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 He knows. He knows exactly what you're going to do. He, I, you know, he knew exactly what she was going to do before he gave it. You know, and you know, he knew exactly she was going to follow through. He knew everything because God knows our heart. You know, he knows everything about us top down, front sideways. And he knows the thoughts, as the Bible says, of men. So he knew exactly she was going to be. And I love that because even in her, Samuel was blessed as well, Amen. you know, because of it. Yes. Mm. Yes. yes. Don't have anything else on those verses one through 11 before we keep going. And God didn't just bless her with Samuel. She mm -hmm. keep on blessing her. Yep. She kept on blessing he opened up her. that wound and she flooded. opened up the floodgates of heaven. And the blessing keeps flowing through. Won't yep. he do it? Amen. Won't he do it? Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness. Mm. Yes. Uh, yes. Praise. Praise. Just praise him. That's all he mm. wants you to do. Praise him. Amen. That he inhabits the praises of his people. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. We have the misuse 
Oh, you got something, bro? Yeah, we, uh, but we could also use this as a lesson, you know, to, to young ladies going through the same thing. Uh, yes. Penina is going through. Yes. Here she has a husband. She's giving him kids, but he's still showing more mm -hmm. love to Hannah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Penina should have been Hannah. She should have been the one on her knees talking to the Lord versus letting jealousy get away from her and then start poking Hannah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. My blessings and he can take away. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Amen. 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 Praise God. <clears throat> we have the misuse of offerings. Um, I'm about to see this here. <laughs> uh, verse 12 through 17. Um, Brother Hutchings. Amen. Verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. Mm. And he struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. Mm -hmm. So they so they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came tighter. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, give flesh to the to roast for the priest, for he would not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thou so desire, then he would answer him, nay. But thou shalt give it, give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Mm. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read those commentaries there. Okay. Mm. Okay. Verse twelve um, for the commentary. The phrase sons of Belial means literally sons of worthlessness. The expression commonly denotes morally corrupt individuals. Yeah. Hannah used the feminine form of the expression as she implored Eli not to consider her a daughter of worthlessness. Yeah. The priest, uh, 13 and 14, the priest's legitimate custom was specifically prescribed in the law of Moses, Leviticus 7, 32 through 34. A flesh hook of three teeth, three pronged meat fork, was no nowhere stipulated. Rather, Eli's sons were making their own rules for mm -hmm. sacrifice, presumably, presumably to secure more for themselves. Mm -hmm. And 15 and 16, the fat was the Lord's portion of the sacrifice, Leviticus 3, 3 and 5. The text implies Eli's sons were also eating the fat of the sacrificial animals. The warning that the fat must be burnt first, a warning went unheeded, indicates the common people had a greater moral conscience than Eli's sons did. And 17, mm -hmm. uh, the Hebrew verb translated abhorred indicates strong displeasure or disdain. It can be translated despise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were Just because you in a position of authority don't mean you following God. Mm -hmm. And the way in his way and what what he wants because they're taking it into their own hands to reinvent the wheel that God has laid out, yeah. and we see a lot of that go uh, go on even today. You know, people reinvent the word to fit their narrative. They re reinvent the word to fit whatever situation that they're in, and it's not necessarily sound. Um, understanding of the word or the scriptures that they use in order to get their own will across. So you see them here, Eli's sons who are put in a place in a position of priestlyhood, of course, and they're not following the duties that God has put laid out before them. You know, so there's, there's um, trouble there because God's going to recompense, you know, because the fact that 
it's his it's his sacrifice and people are doing what they're supposed to do to bring it and that's why a lot of times when folks say oh i don't want to give my money to the church i don't want to give here people steal that that you're not responsible for that you're responsible to do what god has called you to do you know mm-hmm. god has told you to bring bring it into the storehouse God has told you to sow your talents and your gifts into his kingdom, you know, so you're responsible. Once it leaves your hands, you know, you, you're not responsible for that. Just like when you give, you know, I remember being young, I want to say what, maybe, maybe 12 or 13. And I remember, um, my father actually giving money to a man, a homeless man, and he went straight right in front of him into the liquor store and bought liquor. And um, I was like, you know, at 13, ignorant and just like, well, why would you give him, you know, twenty dollars for I've been asking to go to mall, you know, and he's talking to me and he's like, well, basically what he do with it after I give it to him is not my responsibility. And that and that's the truth. It's what once you give, you give it out of that. And the fact that they're giving and bringing in what they're doing with it, God sees it. God sees it. And he's going to be the one to recompense. He's going to be the one to return. But he tells us don't repay evil for evil. There's a lot here. (coughs) Excuse me. In these verses. Um, Because just because you have kids and they were raised up, you know, in Eli's home. But that doesn't mean everybody does right. That doesn't mean everybody. That's why it's you got to choose who you're going to serve, you know. Mm-hmm. My my commentary reinstates the the saying that we have been saying all through Judges that to remember that in those days Israel had no king and everyone did as it was fit. So everyone did what was right in their own eyes, and this also includes the son of of um Eli. Um, they they took. And did what was right in their own eyes. Um, so it was. It says this was also true of the son of Eli, although apparently a moral man himself had lost control of his parental son, who went so far as to appropriate for themselves the choice meat of the sacrificial animal, which rightly belonged to the Lord as his offering. Moreover, they engage in ritual um, ritual fornication in the very um, precinct of the tabernacle at Shiloh in according to the Canaanite culture um, practice. So even though the Eli was a, a moral man and he was upright in God's sight, then his children, his children was doing wrong. And um, a whole lot of us um, turn a blind eye to what our kids be doing. And we, even when we know it's wrong, but as far as my dad used to say, once you are still under my roof, you have to do what I say. And, you know, I, I, I just can't see, you know, them going that way and he don't know and he don't do nothing about it. Yeah, maybe he didn't know, you know. I don't see where it said he did know, um, but I see like it, it gets hard in this sense is because you raise your children and you want them to do right, but it's ultimately their choice, you know, and that's the sad part. You know, it's like almost like the prodigal son. You you want, you know, your kids to come and do right, but the fact that they don't adhere to it, the punishment that follows and it's that that's the sad part. Because all you can do is pray. All you can do is turn it over to the Lord, you know, and, yeah. and hopefully he was, work it out. he was told. Oh, he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the fact is. That's that, when we get into Eli rebukes of his son. Right. Oh, okay. We haven't got there yet. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's just. Yeah. So, yeah. He, so he does rebuke is correct. So he does correct him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Amen. Just, I mean, as you were saying, we try to train up our ch- children um, according and, you know, what they do afterwards, you know. You yeah. Know. Train them up and God will do it. 
Because yeah. just like, you know, he let us in, he'll lead them in too. Yeah. You know? Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Let's see what we got. Um, you got something in your commentary over there, Brother Chris? No, I think I think y'all hit hit it. Mm -hmm. Because you got folks who really, you know, it's yeah. just today. It, it's really, it's really hits home because there's a lot of false prophets out there, and they take people's faith and they do what they want to do with it. At the end of the day. And the sad part is that they lead so many people astray away from God because they're not doing right. Can you imagine how many people came in here and saw his sons or or understood or knew what was happening? And the fact of like they don't even take it seriously and they're priests, you know, they don't even take it seriously. And they're that, you know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. it leads a lot of people astray and it. it causes people who are just maybe getting a grip of the faith or those who have been in a long time. It causes folks to fall away from God and God gets the blame and it's sad because he is not, is not deserved. You know, it's not warranted. It's, um, that's why I'm like, you know, try to drive home to the kids that, you know, you have people, people are people. And whenever there's people involved, there's going to be error somewhere, you know? So it's not anything that, can be nobody's perfect, you know? So don't blame God for what somebody else does in the name of the Lord, you know? Especially, that's why it's important to study and line it up with his work, to make sure that that thing is accurate and true. Yeah. He, they kind of, it kind of put me in mind of <clears throat> um, Samson's parents, you know, how, you know, Samson did whatever he wanted to do and, and made them, um, a be his accomplice in mm -hmm. doing whatever he wants to do. I mean, that is is not a part of his Nazarite vow, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, right here you can see how um, God kind of is um, putting um, in uh, putting it, making a way out of no way when he placed um, Samuel in the temple god mm -hmm. is making sure that his word is going to stay tried and true and he put samuel there um from such a tender age so that he is not corrupt by the the what is going on around him you know mm -hmm. he put him right there in the in the middle of, of um mm -hmm. e because eli is moral so now eli has a second chance to pour into Samuel the, the his morality. Yeah, yeah. That's what stood out too, is the fact that he already had provisions, you know, just like he knew that Aaron, you know, was going to mess up. He knew who to put as a replacement. Yeah. He knew Moses wasn't going to be able to go in. So he had Joshua already in training. That's we right. see Samuel's there because he knew these sons were about to get you know, like that. We'll continue on with that. Um, we'll stop there um, for time being because it's for sake of time. It's six fifty-two. Um, next time we'll before you, we'll pick up at chapter two, verse twenty-two. So we left off at twenty-one, um, and uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Reverend Hutchings. And we'll just go right into um, Brother Hutchings. I just use my commentary here. It says uh, we need to remember that God displays his creativity, not only by making things from scratch, but also by bringing order and beauty out of messes. Amen. Amen. That's with, uh, with Elkanah having two wives, you can rest assured that was a plum mess. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brother Thompson. Hey man, I'll go back to, you know, Hannah, how she had basically a, a great testimony and, you know, just a perfect example for us today, you know, starting with her testimony, at, you know, with her song and then going back to her, her being a great example, you know, starting in, in um, ch um, chapter one, how it showed, showed us that, you know, she was going through some things, she was being, you know, you know, sort of, I guess, you know, poked at and made fun of and she was weeping and, you know, it shows, you know, it was, wasn't just a short period of time, but it's, you know, said year by year. So she was going through some things for a, you know, long period of time. And then mm -hmm. she went to that prayer, you know, went to God after, you know, you know, dealing with, you know, suffering for a long period, you know, dealing with stuff internally. But it just shows us that, 
you know, even though as we, as we stated before, as has been stated before, even though these verses are sort of being, you know, flown together, um, she prayed and then she, you know, she let, as, you know, Reverend Thompson said before, she left it at the feet of God. And then shortly after that, she gave birth. So as we know, you know, giving birth takes, you know, takes time. So it wasn't a short period, you know, from her prayer until, you know, she saw her prayer answered. So we just have to, you know, as we stated before, you know, see this as testimony and see this as examples that we can live by today by just going to God and, you know, you know, with all your issues, with all your concerns and know that, you know, it may not be when, on your time when it's when it's answered, but God will answer on his time and at the perfect time. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Reverend Thompson. Um, I was reading Matthew chapter 18. Um, I love these verses, 18, 19 and 20. I quote them all the time, but. Um, verse 19, preferably, um, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. So just knowing the power that there is an agreement, you know, I love that her husband was in complete agreement with her. Um, she didn't sidestep him because this is not just her child it's his too, you yeah. know, and, and the fact that they were both in agreement to honor the vow, you know, and, and give the child dedicated back to God um, just shows the power in the union. Um, so I just say, my thing is, you know, make sure you're in agreement, you know, before you move on anything, because if not, you know, that's a foothold for Satan to get in and start mm -hmm. working. You know, so there's power in that agreement, and that's why that's always being challenged. Amen. And our senior pastor who is online, her final words is take your burdens to the Lord in prayer. Amen. 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 And uh, with that said, let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for this powerful message. Thank you, Lord God. And I'm asking you, Lord God, to let it resonate in someone's soul and let them know that when they take their burdens to you, they leave it at your feet and they will see a lot, a lot of results. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you have taught us. Help us to keep it as a part of our daily lives. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. 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 Um, join, <laughs> us, um, join us on Tuesday for our prior line. We were talking about prior tonight. You see how powerful prior is, and it is still powerful today. So join us at 605-313-5388 with an access code of 379-088-POUND so that we can pray and continue tearing down Satan's stronghold. Join us um, on Sunday for a continuation of this Bible study at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. At 10.30 a.m. Sunday morning, join us for the Sunday morning sermon um, every Sunday morning at 10.30 on Ministries of Hope Christian Church, YouTube, and Facebook. Thank you so much. And um, donations to this ministry can be made at Ministries of Hope Christian Church dot com using the square or the paypal thank you so much for joining us and hope something said or done here tonight will move in your lives in a mighty way have a blessed night